twisted and controlling, wicked witch, or worried sick mother who only means the best? Who is Maniba Khan and why is Miss Marvel's mom so darn tough on her? Kamala Khan's bangle gifting grandmother factors into it all, but you have to wonder, does Maniba know all about her mother's superhuman laced past? Or is she just using her mom to guilt trip her own daughter because one just reminds her too much of the other? And does that make her mean or surprisingly normal as a parent? We're going to get into all of that and how it affects the entire mother-daughter relationship arc over the course of the Miss Marvel Disney Plus series, especially in the wake of the release of the trailer for the second episode. So, welcome back to the Mama Saga, where this Marvel-loving mama is a mother by day, but breaks down comic book sagas, movies, and shows like Miss Marvel by night. Mothers and daughters, ooh, that's some tough stuff. But let's get into it and just admit off the jump that Moniva is what tough mama. Look, both in the Miss Marvel comic book saga and so far in the MCU, Maniva is one tough cookie of a mama, but it seems clear that she does so from a place of love and certainly not from her wanting to be like a twisted evil mother figure who's just emotionally torturing her daughter. Muniva's an immigrant to the U.S. from Pakistan and she's Muslim and between those two things, she's a more traditional and conservative parent than many parents in America today might be. Comparatively speaking, now, mind you, this is not a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just making a point. Now, it's clear from episode one of the miniseries so far that Muniva's content to remain steeped in the tradition she grew up with, and this contentment is certainly informing her approach to child rearing as it concerns Kamala. Muniva's strict, she's very largely no-nonsense, and of course to Kamala, she's critical of anything that doesn't involve studying or family time. Now, it's also made clear early on in episode one that Maniva is much more open to being influenced by her son, Amir, than she is by Kamala. After all, in episode one, it was Amir who talked Maniva and Yusuf into allowing Kamala to attend AvengerCon. When it was Kamala asking to go in the beginning, the answer was an emphatic no. But when their firstborn discusses the concept, it's suddenly okay. Hmm. Yet, even after Amir spoke with the parental units and they said yes, Muniva laid down the law to Kamala about the terms of her attending AvengerCon. She was only going to go for two hours, Dad Yusuf had to go with her as a chaperone, and they were going to dress in costumes that covered more of the body, like Big Hulk and Little Hulk. <laughs> very strict, very tough, very conservative. When Kamala said no to those terms, then Muniva Eva made it clear that Kamala couldn't go. It was mom's way or the highway. And of course, the two have locked horns both before and after this incident, which is typical of how many daughters and mothers interact with one another, regardless of whether they are Muslim or not, or whether they hail from Pakistan or not. Be honest, this is the typical deal since the dawn of time with mothers and daughters. But before we go any further into that layer of complexity here in the Miss Marvel MCU-based saga, let's first consider the fact that in the comics, Maniva was super strict with Kamala for a time, but then later on down the line, she figured out that her daughter was leaving the house despite curfew in order to help others as a superhero. Eventually, she decided that if her daughter were doing that for the greater good, she wouldn't get in the way of it. That's coming a long way from Maniba being a strict mother who would otherwise have had a conniption if her daughter broke any of her rules, much less her curfew for any reason whatsoever. Who knows yet, anyway, if Maniba's character arc will be like that in the Disney Plus series or beyond it. Zenobia Shroff, the actress playing Kamala's mother, already confirmed that she'll be in the upcoming movie, The Marvels. So yes, Mama Moniba's coming back to the MCU after the series is over. 
we've got time for this relationship to develop either way. But we've already seen in episode one of Miss Marvel alone plenty of instances when Muniba shows tough love or a no-nonsense exterior, matching that of her comic book counterpart. Like in the beginning of the episode, she defended her daughter despite her flucking her driver's exam in public, but in private kind of marinated her daughter in guilt-tripping misery over what happened to her father's car. In that same scene, she also derided her own mother, Kamala's nani, for being a daydreamer just like Kamala. So it was made very clear very quickly in the miniseries that Muniba is way more conservative and straight-laced than even her own mother was. She grew up in Pakistan years ago. And in yet another scene, Muniba again denounces her mother's being a free-spirited and perhaps melodramatic individual after she views the personal effects that Nani sent from Pakistan to the Khan household in Jersey City as mere junk that she was passing on to the family before she dies. Muniba even takes a bangle that Kamala is examining out of her hands throws it in the box and instructs her son Amir to help banish the box and its contents from Kamala's presence by taking it to the attic. She won't even let her daughter consider using or wearing the bangle, even just a simple jewelry. Talk about being strict. Now, whether Muniba knows that the bangle is something more, like maybe a nega band, like I theorized in my recent video, nega bands, why does Miss Marvel have them? Well, whether Muniba knows the secret the bangle holds or not, we, the audience, don't know right now. But I'd say for purposes of this video, for purposes of the mother-daughter relationship between Kamala and her mother Muniba, it kind of doesn't matter. Whether Maniva is so tough because she's been privy to the true secrets of the bangle or bracelet or not, it's clear that she's the type of mother that if she doesn't want her daughter to have access to something, then she's gonna put her foot down and that's that. No access, forget about it. So you might now be asking yourself, but why is Maniva so tough? Again, I don't think it's because she's some wicked mother figure. Instead, it's because she cares, and that makes things complicated because she's a sympathetic character, a sympathetic antagonist even in this story. Look, Maniva doesn't want her daughter to be a troublemaker, get hurt, or in any way engage in haram or forbidden activity by being a free spirit who doesn't follow rules and practices that should otherwise keep her safe. So she doesn't want Kamala to be like the young woman that a fellow community auntie was complaining about as Kamala and her mom were shopping for outfits to wear for Amir's upcoming wedding. You know, the girl who apparently left to go backpacking through Europe to find herself and isn't engaged yet? Oh no, that's not the type of woman that a strict conservative Pakistani mom like Maniba wants her daughter to emulate. Her perspective, of course, is that she's trying to protect her daughter from physical or emotional harm or heartache. She cares about her daughter and wants good things for her. Maniva has more traditional and conservative expectations of her daughter, which include her studying to be a successful person professionally, who is also looking to marry someone and start her own family, just like Maniva herself, herself has done. It's worked for her, it should work for her daughter. But of course, that's her presuming that Kamala would be better off as the functional equivalent of her clone. It's interesting that her own mother seemed to be a free spirit in the past in the way Kamala is now, and maybe because Muniba railed against her own mother growing up, as all daughters are wont to do from time to time, she's now subconsciously railing against Kamala too because she reminds Muniba of Nani herself. In fact, in episode one, Muniba came out and said that specifically. As a result, her mother's free-spirited, allegedly daydreaming personality type might just be serving as a trigger for her, period. Whether she knows that the bangle from her mother is a negaband 
or something to that effect or not. That plus her traditional and conservative bent might be enough collectively to explain why Maniba is so tough on Kamala over and above any sort of toughness she shows to her brother Amir. But then again, mother-daughter relationships are fraught with complex emotions and challenges, even when there's a lot of love and respect woven into the fabric of that familial connection. And lots of mothers sometimes unwittingly use guilt as a tool to win emotional skirmishes with their daughters, like when Maniba was guilt-tripping Kamala during the car ride home from her driver's test for damaging the car her father worked so hard for, and by being a daydreamer, because that daydreaming might have led to everything going so wrong during the road test. Guilt is a powerful tool that is often used in complicated familial relationships like mother-daughter relationships and will manifest when one party, like Muniba, is critical of another party, like Kamala. Guilt is often used by a parent to get their child to feel or act in ways that they otherwise wouldn't want to. And that is not super healthy to do, obviously. Muniba doesn't want her daughter to have her head in the clouds be a daydreamer or a goofball that thinks it's great for someone to travel the world instead of study and succeed and or settle down and have a family. Kamala's mom wants her to buckle down and be successful personally and professionally. She doesn't want her to be a goofball lacking purpose and direction, but admittedly she's not choosing the best way to guide or direct her daughter by defaulting to using guilt as leverage over her. But let's face it, this is often the weapon of choice by parents. And for being honest, it's often the weapon of choice for children too. <laughs> The guilt tripping continues at the end of episode one, when Kamala attends AvengerCon against her parents' wishes and then attempts to sneak back into the Khan family home undetected, only to fail miserably in doing so. She's busted by Maniba, of course, and then Maniba laces into her by saying that she just can't recognize her Kamala. She says, I've seen what happens when someone gets lost in their fantasies. Again, referring to her mother and her disapproval of her attitude and apparently her overall approach to life. Does this mean that she knows? about her mother possibly being a superhuman or using specially powered bangles like the one she sent over from Pakistan to behave like a superhuman? Again, maybe, maybe not. For purposes of the mother-daughter struggle itself, again, I don't think it matters. Muniba wants her daughter to be practical, not a daydreamer. She wants her daughter to be conservative, not distracted by cosmic things, not living more liberally than her family is comfortable with for themselves in terms of attitude, approach, and lifestyle. And when Kamala says to her, basically, spare her from sharing a story about Nani, or her thoughts about Nani, Muniba then guilt trips her even more by saying that, nevertheless, Kamala went and acted like Nani, even though she, Muniba, would see that as a betrayal, her actual word, and tells her daughter to get her head out of the clouds to start acting more as how she, Muniba, wishes her to be. It's very common for people, especially mothers too, when they're hurt, bring up past events or concepts that they know will throw the other person off kilter, make them feel hurt too, and make them feel upset and guilty. This is textbook mom stuff, really. And I'm a mother telling this to you. But look, I promise you I've gone out of my way not to read from that textbook and to write my own relationship narrative with my child. Suffice it to say, Muniba's doing what a lot of moms can do and often do, and it's often done because the guilt trippers need to express unresolved hurt, consciously and or subconsciously. Is this healthy? No. Do I recommend it? No. Do you maybe recognize that pattern having shown up in your life? Probably. Many teens, quite frankly, people in general, probably recognize a pattern like that. In healthy mother-child relationships, though, both parties need to accept one another for who they really are and not try to change them. 
It's clear from episode one of the Miss Marvel Disney Plus miniseries that both Moniba and Kamala are just starting their journey towards accepting one another for who they are. And let's be honest, the older a parent is, the more conservative they are, the more traditional their views are, the harder their own leg of the journey towards acceptance of their children and their ways may be. Maniva may be tough, but she means well. She's definitely controlling and dominant, but she's not evil and twisted. She's coming from a place of wanting the best for her daughter. So now it's time for the Mama Saga post credit scene. Yeah, the trailer for episode two has dropped. And it's clear that Maniva's relationship and influence on Kamala actually causes her daughter to wrestle with her thoughts and feelings until she's in knots to the point where she goes to her imam or the prayer leader at her mosque to untangle it all. She wants to be a good daughter in the eyes of her mother. She says to her imam, how does she convince everyone that she's good? To which he says, good is not a thing you are, Kamala. It is a thing you do. And in the space between those sentences, you can see what appears to be Kamala and her mother in a tight hug. There's so much love and complexity going on there between those two. You can see from the look on Kamala's face as her imam gives her this advice, she's so riding that struggle bus. So stay tuned for the next planned episode of the Mama Saga, where we do a deep dive into how all of this struggle continues to affect Kamala's faith, her relationship with her mother, her evolving self-image, and arguably even the use of her superpowers themselves moving forward in the Miss Marvel Disney Plus miniseries saga. If you are struggling with feelings of self-worth, this might just be the video for you, and I'm here for you and all of that good stuff. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to The Mama Saga for more comic book saga breakdowns, Salty Mama style. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.